Nice. Dude, let's go. <laughs> What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Untamed Outdoors and today we have a pretty cool video on showcasing our rod and reel arsenals for the upcoming 2024 fishing season. So we've done a lot when it comes to the kayaks this this winter. One thing we haven't really touched on is the rods and the reels this year. We've been pretty quiet on those. We feel like we owe it to you guys to make a video, especially if you know, you're watching one of our fishing videos later on in, in the year and you see a combo that you like that one of us may be using and you want to check it out, this will be the video for that. Um, so this will be pretty cool. We've done this almost every year. We've been pretty good about it. We haven't done one in probably oh, almost 18 months now, probably. Yeah, um, so it's, while. yeah, it's been a little while. So we've made quite a bit of changes since then and we have a lot more rods. So yeah, let's just get into this video. We're gonna be going over like the rod itself, the reel, what the purpose is going to be, the line that we have on it and you know, how much of an impact it's going to have on our, you know, daily fishing setups, how often we may bring it. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I guess we'll start off with mine, and I'll, we'll just go one by one. Uh, so, first off is my Ned Rig setup. This is the uh, Mojo Yak Rod. Uh, it's actually a 7-foot medium power, fast action. Uh, and then I got that paired with a Shimano Nexave 2500. It's got 10-pound Power Pro white braid on it, and then I got it run to an 8 or 10-pound fluorocarbon leader and I use this just for Ned Rig solely for Ned Rig so this will be like my beginning of the year rod just swinging into fishing season and coming out through the end like late November early December if we ever fish that late yeah definitely so yeah this is just kind of like the all-round Ned Rig setup I yeah. don't do anything else with this rod it's a really good rod I like yeah. this rod oh yeah yeah Ned Rig's definitely gonna be a focal point we are a few Hopefully a few days out from going fishing for the first time, definitely want to have a test run on the Titan X before we, you know, start getting into tournaments and things like that. So we're going to be hitting the Ned Rigs and Jerk Baits pretty hard this year. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is an awesome setup. Yeah. I'll move to the next one. And keep in mind, guys, so <laughs> some of the setups you may see, some of you may be thinking like, oh my God, who has the money for all this stuff and things like that. Just keep in mind, this is like years of collecting, years of building our setups up. We started on, you know, ugly sticks and things like that but yeah. we've over the years we've really we've chipped away at you know upgrading our setups and things like that and we're finally at a point where you know for our needs we've kind of like plateaued we don't really need any like like metaniums or anything like that yeah. so most people don't need that stuff but yeah just keep that, that's a luxury <laughs> yeah that's that's and that's a want not a need also yeah. i i would like to preface some of these rods and reels are subject to change yeah i mean we're pretty much always rotating gear yeah. and switching reels and combos and everything like that. So if you see something that's on this video that might not look the same later in the future, it might be because we switched it up. So this is just as of date, this stuff. Right. So one thing that hasn't changed in the... Many years. Many years. Yeah. I don't know, three, four years. 2020? Something like that. On the Pelicans? That I've had this rod. This is the favorite Flares Frog and Flipping Stick. This is my frog and rod. This is solely my frog and rod. That it's no longer in production either. That's yeah, yeah. That's it ended probably in like late twenty twenty. So these rods have been around. They're actually pretty rare. Yeah, honestly, this is probably the best frog and rod I think I've ever used. It's it's a workhorse. It's a heavy duty rod. It's an extra heavy rod. It's a seven foot, I believe, extra three heavy. extra heavy. Yeah, seven, yeah. And then I got that paired with the SLX, not the DC, just the SLX. Uh, 50 pound power pro braid, just an absolute tank workhorse rod. You saw me catch a fish on it, I believe. Yeah, last that was year a good one. I think that's in the current intro too. That was that was a good fish. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's one of those rods that you can always go to, and I've never ever had an issue with this setup, so I've never switched this setup. So yeah, we're just gonna keep rocking it. with it. Yeah. All right, next one. Oh, that was also a seven two gear ratio, is what I run on that yeah. rod. By the way, just to let you guys know, another absolute workhorse this is a beast i added this to the collection last year this is the guggen squad muscle rod it's a seven six heavy seven uh, five seven five heavy sorry uh, not that it matters no <laughs> the guggen squad gold muscle rod and this is compared with the uh Corrado. Um, just 
beast of a rod. Yeah. Absolute those are, beast. Yeah. Those are the absolute like staple in my eyes. Those are like the most trustworthy reels in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, this is like, this is the best reel I think I own. Yeah. I think this thing is like fantastic. Probably the smoothest reel I own. They're, they're excellent. Like, and without a doubt. I mean, it's just, it's an absolute workhorse. This thing, yeah. this, I, I put it through the ring and this can hold any heavy punch and anything like that. That's what this rod's for. Exactly. So, you know, late summer, deep mats, stuff like that. I can throw one ounce, one and a half ounce tungsten punching through mats and stuff. So that's why I got this rod. Um, I needed to upgrade from a previous less good rod that I had, which I still have in the arsenal. I still use that for some stuff, but this is workhorse. All right. So coming up next, this is my Ducket Jacob Wheeler. This is a seven foot a medium heavy action. This is my spinner bait rods, kind of like a reaction rod. I can throw my liplesses on this if I want to. I primarily just throw spinner baits on this one. And I got that paired with a Diowitz tool. This is a 6.3 gear ratio. I've had this combination for probably three or four years as well. I absolutely love this combo. It's kind of weird you see in the beginning of this, I don't have any ducket rods, yeah. which is kind of funny because they're probably my most bought rod and my favorite rod by far. I love the ducket rods. I've had nothing but good luck with these. I actually did, I'll preface this, I did break one. Yeah, you did. But that one. was by my own stupid mistake. I broke one too. So I, I have broken a ducket rod myself as well. But that was your stupid mistake. That was also my stupid mistake. Yeah. You've actually broken two duck rods. I've broken a lot of rods in my life. <laughs> a lot. I've broken, realistically, probably seven. Yeah. I've broken seven rods. Yeah. But it, you, you got to go into fishing expecting that to happen. And in, in some degree, no rod is going to be perfect, even the $1,000 ones. Just like any other like sports item, like a lacrosse stick or anything like that, it's, it's, the, it's the same principle. Yeah. No, that was my own stupidity. Yeah. I got it caught in a tree. I broke it. Every other ducket rod I've had that I've used, I, they're phenomenal. I yeah. love them. They're very sensitive rods. You can feel everything in the water with them. And the Daiwa, you can't go wrong with a good Daiwa no. reel. So. T-Wing systems are really awesome. They're not a gimmick. They really do work. They do. Yeah. They're especially, especially when it comes to jigs. I find that the T-Wing systems are really good. Um, just my opinion, though. All right. So this is the rod that I was talking about previously that I upgraded my Guggen Gold for. This is the Lose Carbon Fire Speed Stick. This is a 7.3 heavy fast action rod. And I got that paired with the SLX DC. This is an 8.2 gear ratio reel. So this is gonna be like my lighter stuff that I wanna kind of flip around. So like if I'm flipping around a lunker log with like a quarter ounce or a 3 16 ounce weight, I'll go to this setup because that one's a little bit heavy duty. That one's got 65 pound braid. This one, I just run 20 pound fluorocarbon. It's still thick enough though where I can go in some heavy cover, but I'm if I'm gonna be fishing heavy cover, I got that other setup. Right. So this is just pretty much a basic flipping around like little weights and stuff. That's what I use this rod for. Yeah. Older generation carbon fire for sure. I think that was, that was like one of the very first carbon. Oh, that's, I don't even, I don't even know. I think it, this it, is one of the very first old. time that I, yeah, it's, it's, it's an old. It's definitely minimum five years old. It's an oldie, but I keep it in the arsenal. That one might be getting switched this year. Yeah. Just keep an eye out. Cause yeah. I, I like to go crazy sometimes and just buy a bunch of stuff. All right. And then the rest of the rods I have are actually ducats. Like yeah. I said, that's that's going to be my my favorite rod. So this is the ducat triad. This is a seven foot medium heavy. This is my top water rod. And that's paired with the Lose Mock Crush Reel. Both of these items I actually bought off of Connor. <laughs> I did not buy them from a store. I bought them off of Connor. Or traded another or rod. Or traded, yeah. yeah. I think I had a Dobbins rod or something and I traded them for the ducat rod because I... I'm in love with the ducket yeah. rods and he likes the Dobbins rods a lot. So, so yeah, this is my top water. This will be like my walking baits. I'll run on this sometimes. It's kind of hard when you got braid, but I'll run like a popper on it if I need to. And then, and I got this buzz bait on this too. So I like to run this a lot. It makes a lot of noise. So it attracts the fish. And then this is a, I believe a seven, five gear ratio top water. Um, I could probably get away with running a little bit faster gear ratio if I'm going to run like buzz baits and stuff like that to really get it at the top of the water but 
There could be other, other <clears throat> stuff thrown on that. Yeah. Um, things like that. This is pretty much top water, not counting frogs. Um, yeah, yeah. This is like everything else top right, water. Like poppers and things like that. But yeah, lose. So shockingly enough, the lose reels like that are actually pretty good for frogs. I know yeah. we just said they weren't frog reels. They're actually pretty good because they got a really high drag capacity. I think it's like a 20 pound drag compared to a lot yeah, of other Yeah, it's like 20 Shimano's. or 22. It's actually really yeah. good. Yeah. So if you're ever thinking about a good frog rod, definitely consider one of the lose rods. Or even like a heavy flipping reel. Like yeah. If you're going to be flipping heavy mats, the, the Lou's seem to have like a higher drag capacity than pretty much any other company. Right. I mean, there's companies that compare like Shimano and Daiwa have a pretty good, they have their own specific reels for that type of stuff. But we found that the Lou's, the, even just that combo one has, I think it's 18 or 20 pounds of drag capacity, which is, yeah. which is nice. Just like that Lou's carbon fire, that thing's been around for a long time. Yeah. For us. Yeah. That... All right. So this is the the rod and reel that you guys probably see most often because I don't know how to fish very good. Um, this is the Ducket Jacob Wheeler spinning combo. This is seven foot medium action and that's powered with the Ike, Abu Garcia Ike Revo reel. This thing is an absolute beast. I mean, I have reeled so many fish in with this rod and reel combo right here. I There's, there's really nothing bad to say about this. Yeah. I love the reel. I love the rod. It's a it's a great go to. Yeah, and depending on the type of bait that you or that you tend to favor, you know, I always recommend if you're going to do what we do and get like separate rods and reels for each style of fishing, definitely favor the ones that you use more. So this is a prime example of that, you know, because this is not this is not a cheap setup here. No, this is it's a little bit on the heftier end setup, but. Like you said, when when the bite gets really tough, this is like the rod you pull out and you know you're going to get on something. Right. And we use these rods so frequent. I, I like to invest in the stuff I'm using. So right. This one's paired with, again, I believe this is 12-pound Power Pro in blue. I think it was 15. Or 15. 15, yeah. And then this is a 10-pound fluorocarbon leader. I run that on pretty much all of my spinning setups. Yeah. So, yeah. Sweet. Workhorse. All right, we got two left here, and then it's on to Connor. So this is the Ducket Silverado. This is a seven foot three medium heavy. Again, sticking with the theme of the Ducket. This has also got a tool on it. This will be my chatterbait rod. So chatterbait, uh, square bill rod I could use on this. Some a little bit bigger crankbaits like some DT sixes, some DT tens, stuff like that. If I wanted to throw it on that. And then I got that paired with the 7.3 Daiwa Tatula. Again, Daiwa with the T-Wing system. I mean, you really can't beat it. It's, no, you can't. It's like one of the top reels, I'd say, in my opinion right now. Yeah. Um, They're awesome, especially for the money. Like, yeah. Around 130, 140 bucks. I mean, you really can't beat it. It's. It, I would say it's, you know, it's very similar to, like, I almost want to say it's similar to the SLX DC and the fact that the T-Wing system kind of takes some of the burden off of you. Yeah. Yeah. It's I, I agree with that. It's 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 pretty unique and I think you know if you're not looking to spend two hundred bucks you can definitely get the to a CT. The S V I think is around like two ten now, somewhere in that ballpark, yeah. but very, very cool. Uh, this is I call this the the bird's nest avoider. Yeah. This T Wing system. So if you're if you're having problems with bird's nest and you want to spend a little bit of money on a reel, I'd probably go for a Daiwa tool or something of that sort with the T Wing system on it. And yeah, I just got this paired with I think it's fifteen pound cigar. Uh, red label, something like that, and yeah, this is the another workhorse rod for me. I you'll see this on the channel a lot. I like to throw this around when the bite's getting tough, or I'm liking want to cover water, some structure. So yeah, all right, and then it's on to the final, and I bet you can't guess what kind of rod it is. <laughs> oh wait, it's a ducket again. Oh, go figure. So this is the last. Last one in my rod and reel arsenal here. Yep. I got some spare rods and stuff like that. I keep at home. I keep in the bait cave here. But this is the last one that you'll see on the water with me. This is the Ducket Insight. This is a 7.6 medium heavy. This is my all-round jig rod. I got it paired with another SLX DC. This one is also higher gear ratio. This one's a 7.2 gear ratio. I like the, the little bit slower than the 8.2 for my jig rod because I find myself reeling in a lot of a lot more slack i find myself reeling a lot more so i like to slow it down with this i mean keep the bait in front of the fish a little bit longer so yeah there's nothing bad i can say about this this is another workhorse rod 
<laughs> it's another ducket rod. Yeah. So you, you can see the theme. I, I really enjoy the ducket rods. I really enjoy the Shimano reels. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much it for all of mine, I'd say. All right. You ready to get into mine? Yeah, let's, let's do it. All right. So we got quite a bit here. We'll start with, we'll start small. We'll start pretty small. And this is my drop shot setup. So this is something that I'm going to be favoring a little bit heavier in certain ponds that we're going to be going to. A little bit spoiler if you put two and two together there. A lot of areas up north really like, you know, drop shots and things like that. So that's where this kind of comes in handy. But this is the setup. So this is the Luz TP1X speed stick. This is a seven foot medium action. And the, and the reel here is the Shimano Sedona 2500. Slight step up from like the Shimano Nexave and the Sienna. It's like the third tier one in those, but this is a pretty good setup. It was around 80 bucks for the reel. And in my opinion, low-end Shimano is the best low-end company that you can go for. Even their like $30 Siennas are shockingly good. But this thing is awesome. 2500 HG, 12 pound fluorocarbon on this one too. I uh, really want to get that bait down when you're drop shotting, that's really important. But yeah, this is really, really cool. Might not be one you're gonna see all the time, but still one that's pretty important. All right, next one here. This is a little more important compared to the, yeah. the drop shot setup. So this is the Ned Rig setup. So this is a Dobbins Fury series, seven foot medium fast action. So this is perfect for Ned Rigs and things like that. Similar to the drop shot setup. And this is 15 pound uh, yellow Power Pro braid. I like the yellow, I like the high vis, similar to Pete's light blue. The high vis is really good so you can see where you're casting into and where the, the line is. Probably, I think it was a 10 pound a liter. And then this is a really awesome reel. This is the Shimano Stratic 2500 HG. Yeah, that thing is actually insane. It's so nice, I don't even like being around it. <laughs> like, it, it has a real glisten right now, and it's it's nice. Yeah, these are these are really awesome. I'm a really big fan of it. It's very similar to the Shimano Vanford, and I've used the Vanford. This is the third season. I have beat up that Shimano Vanford and stay strong. We'll talk a little bit about it in a little bit. But this is awesome. Stratic 2500 HG, perfect for Ned Rigs. This is something we're going to be kind of favoring pretty heavy in, like, the first month or two of the fishing season. This is going to be a really... Almost probably just as go-to as the Wacky Rig setup is for the first two months. This is awesome. All right. And like we said, you guys are going to see all of these on the channel this year at some point. So if you ever have any questions in any of our videos, just leave a comment. We can help you out at some point. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so this one has a spider on it. Gets it off. It's extra Lee catalog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. So this is my, I'll call it medium duty swim bait setup. I am actually in the process of figuring out a way to get a heavy duty swim bait setup because I really want to get more into that this year. But this is my medium duty. So this is a Albu Garcia Revo Beast 40, uh, Revo Beast X, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it, 40. This is a large reel. So this is more designed for your heavier baits, your more, just your heavier baits. So like your swim baits and things like that. This is the St. Croix Bass X rod. I'll kind of take it out of the rod talk a little bit more. St. Croix Bass X Rod 7.4 Heavy. Uh, this is rated for up to one and a half ounces. So this is perfect for like a medium duty swim bait setup. Um, you're not throwing those like those wood baits or anything <laughs> on this thing. You're going to be throwing like your, for example, I have a, a Nessie 7 on here. It's one ounce. So not anything crazy, but you know, larger than your average like crank bait and things like that. Yeah, that, that thing is, it looks massive. Yeah. It, it <laughs> does. It really does. That's a... It's just going to be an all-round swim bait rod, so that's, I'd say, perfect for what yeah. you're trying to do with it. Exactly. This is nothing overkill. And I believe the Revo Beast X is a 6.6 .6 gear ratio. It might be a little fast for swim baits, but we'll live with it. Yeah, super, super cool. Okay. Don't want to hit them on the ceiling. That's why we get the rod socks on them. Exactly. That's why we pay for them. All right. So this combo has been something that has been around for a very long time on the channel. Probably back all the way to 2020. Um, yeah, it's been that long. Years. Like, it's crazy how long it's been. This is my jig setup. So this is a... The rod is a Dobbins Fury. I, I, I'm a big fan of Dobbins Fury. 7 foot 3 heavy action. And the reel is the Daiwa Tatula SV. So this is a step up from the Daiwa Tatula CTs. Not anything crazy, but it is nice. You get a little bit better build quality, a little bit better materials that they use. A little bit better drag system, too. I'm Reels are definitely not, like... 
our area of expertise. I make that very clear. I think our area of expertise is, you know, the kayaks and things like that, but yeah. we still want to invest in good products, but this is a prime example of that. So like I said, 8.1 gear ratio to Tula SV, four years going strong. I just greased it for the first time, probably not the best thing for the reel, <laughs> but greased it for the first time, restored it completely to like new. This thing's excellent. Yeah, there's, you can't say anything bad about that. I mean, no. you have beat that thing up. Yeah. For the last four years, four strong fishing seasons, a lot of time on the water, a yeah. lot of time throwing it. I mean, for it to hold up like that, you can't say anything bad about that. Exactly. I, I got no complaints there. Okay. Next one. Getting caught in the ceiling here. All right. Okay. So this is the one that I was probably one of the more excited ones to introduce. So this is my crankbait setup. So this is, I'll start with the rod first. This is a Ducket Insight. I know Pete loves his Ducats. I, have a, I only have the one Ducket, but this is a 7.6 cranking stick. So I can only assume it's probably a medium action. It doesn't actually give a, it could be a medium heavy, but it's a cranking stick. Yeah. Either way, so it's got a lot of bend in it. I love this rod. I've caught plenty of fish on this. The last video in the, in the fishing season last year, we caught quite a bit of fish on this guy. It works really well, but this is the upgrade. So the old reel I had was a Daiwa Fuego. We had it a long time. We had it, I think, either three or four seasons. We got it in the height of, you know, when all that stuff was going on in 2020. And now we finally upgraded. So this is the Shimano Cronark MGL. So we made a video on this a few months back before we got the Titan X. This reel is incredible. It's probably the, it's the best reel that I have right now. That's the best reel that either of us have. Yeah. I, this sure. is this is the top dog for sure. It's a little bit of a fast gear ratio. It's a seven one to one gear ratio, but again, it's not the end of the world. It's just a small smidgen too fast, but not a big deal. Definitely gonna be something that we favor in the early months of the year. Like right now, I got a red lipless uh, rattle trap on there. So really gonna be favoring this quite a bit. And I think this will work out pretty well for us. But yeah, this is the 150 HT Cronark. I am probably the most excited to try this one out of all the new stuff that we have. Yeah. I would say so. I would, I would, <laughs> I want to watch you try it. Yeah. This thing is going to be awesome. Okay. So now we have, this is the Texas rig setup. So this is a little different than the last rod reel video that we made almost 18 months ago. Uh, the rod has stayed the same. So this is the favorite Defender limited edition Lunkers TV combo and this was back when before Guggen made their own rods this was back when favorite was actually with Guggen um so you can't buy this anymore but this is a 7.6 heavy power uh so this is a this is a big rod and the reel I have on it was originally the 8.2 SLX DC that's on Pete's combo now I just wasn't a huge fan of it um, I used it for many years I want something a little bit different so we went with the Corrado K 8.5 to 1 gear ratio. So very, very fast. In my opinion, I think I'll like this a little bit more, but this is what we're going to be rolling with with Texas rigs. Yeah. That, <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's a good setup. Yeah. That, there's nothing wrong with it. No. I mean, that's the best of both worlds. You get your heavy backbone rod with a really great reel. Like I said, I have a Corrado K on my, on my actually. punching setup. Yeah. yeah honestly. 8.5. And it's, it's a beast, dude. Yeah. They're so smooth crispy reels to use yes yeah. they really are awesome yeah I mean, they're they're so tried and true all right let's go to the next one here okay okay so next one here is another karate okay this is my frogging setup so very similar to pete's we have the same exact rod so this is a 7.3 extra heavy fast action tip the flares frog and flipping stick from favorite this is the second one of that rod too yeah yeah the other one i slammed on a car door about four years ago. I wish we had gotten that on camera because that would have been an all time great moment. Right in um, my truck door. <laughs> man, that was back when we only used one truck for two kayaks. That was that was nuts. That was crazy. All right, so same thing as Pete, seven three extra heavy, flesh frog and flipping stick. And this is another Corrado K. Okay. So Corrado K okay, 8.5 to one gear ratio, same reel as the reel that we just talked about. This has 50 pound Power Pro V2 Super Slick. So the V2 Super Slick, it's cool. It's definitely not a necessity, but it's definitely, you can notice the difference in how much smoother the line is compared to standard Power Pro. Um, again, not really a necessity, but it's cool if you can get it on sale or something like that, I would suggest picking it up. But very cool. We've talked about this one before. It hasn't changed. All right, we got, we still have five more. All right, 
So this is my spinnerbait setup. So this is something, again, we've had for many years, hasn't changed a whole lot. It stayed pretty much the same throughout. So this is the same, the same kind of thing as the old 7.6 Heavy Lunkers TV. This is the same thing, but the green one was a special edition. This was the standard edition Lunkers TV favorite. Again, they don't make this anymore, but this is a 7.3 medium heavy fast action tip. Yep, fast action tip. And the reel on it is a Daiwa Tatula SV. This is the 6.3 to 1 gear ratio though. So same exact, honestly, same exact outcome as the 8.1 has been, just as tried and true, um, but the 6.3 instead of the uh, 8.1. So not a whole lot to talk about with this one. We've, again, talked about this one numerous times, probably in all three Arsenal videos we've done in the channel's history. Yeah, mm, you've seen these a million times. Yeah. Every time we go on the water, we get these rods with us, so. Okay, so the next one here is a very interesting one. So, all right, this is my chatterbait setup. So this is, the reel is a Corrado DC 6.3 to one gear ratio. For something like chatterbaits, a DC is excellent. It is, in my opinion, the preferred method that I want to go for DC. I really like these because typically when you're fishing chatterbaits and spinnerbaits, you want some chop, a little bit of yeah. wind and things like that. So the DCs really help out with wind. So that's definitely a big deal. So this is the Cashin Icon 7-1 specific chatterbait series rod. We've had a little bit of a shaky, a little bit of a shaky history with this particular rod. So back in, I think, late June of 2023, we made a video on the Cash and Icon where we tried it out for the first time. It was awesome. When we first did that Cash and Icon series video, it was a really, really good rod. By the end of the 2023 fishing season, the rod had completely fallen apart. The real seat was, so for example, I could hold this reel down and I could spin the handles back and forth like crazy. Half of the eyes failed on it. It was crazy. I did not expect that to ever happen. The reviews on these rods don't ever point to that happening. So it was really, it was so unexpected. Um, and, and actually Cashin took care of us. We didn't have to pay any fees for the repair of this rod. I sent the rod back out to Cashin. They sent it back to me. Um, I think they actually fully repaired it, but now it is 10 times better. I have not, there's no signs of wear or tear on this thing at all. So they, they, they made it right for sure. And they fixed it the kind of idea as to what happened was probably a design fluke. Something might've just happened in manufacturing. Yeah. I would say either that or just a bad batch of glue or something that held the glue. It, um, was, it was alarming how I had that actually happen yeah. on the new, not the new, new version of the Bass X, the 2023 Bass X. I had the same exact problem. And what I was told by Bass X was a lot of the companies that were building rods, they were getting bad batches of glue. So this would happen. So they'd replace the rod for absolutely nothing. Um, so that's really cool that companies step up like that and do that, especially with these. Yeah. I mean, I was, I mean, I think in one of the videos I even said out loud, I was not thrilled because, you know, you spend yeah. $230 and, you know, you expect that kind of stuff to happen in like your ugly sticks and, you know, things like that. You don't expect that to happen on a $250 rod. So that was a little alarming, but thankfully, you know, they made it right. That's why you invest in, you know, higher end stuff because they take care of you. Um, they definitely want you to protect your investment. So def definitely a big deal. And I'm very, very excited to be using this cash and rod and the Corrado DC uh, in a couple days. Yeah, very, couple very days soon. Now. Where do we go? Three left? Three left. Three left. Three left. All right. And I'm saving the, I'm saving the big boy for last. All right. So this is my jerkbait setup. So this is something that I am going to be favoring extremely heavy come the tournament day very, very soon. But this is another... Uh, Tatula CT. This is actually the newer model. The the models that Pete have are actually a couple years older. Yeah. Um, but this one is a little bit different. It's actually a dark blue and not a black anymore. They did away with the black color. But it's a dark blue and it's a lighter blue retention knob. And this is this is the Guggen Twitch six foot nine medium. So when it comes to jerk baits, you really want a shorter rod. It gives you a little bit more of an erratic action. You really want that. I I am so so when it comes to Guggen rods. I'm a little 50-50 on them. But this one I've had. This is this is gonna be its third season I've had it. It's used you know relatively consistently. I'm trying to get more into it this year. But it has it, it stood the test of time. Yeah, 
I mean, I have my Guggen Gold Rod. I know you had a Guggen Gold Rod. So this is, again, the Guggen Twitch Rod. Again, the jerk baits are going to be really, really useful come, you know, cold weather and things like that. I killed it with jerk baits in the fall this year, so I am even more excited to try this out now. But very, very cool. Let's get to the next one. All right. So this one is my top water, not frogs. So this is everything but frogs and for things like walker ploppers, buzz baits, poppers, things like that. This is the real, this is a Shimano SLX, not the DC, just the SLX, 7.2 to one gear ratio on the Luz TP1X speed stick, 7.2 medium heavy fast action. So I'm actually a big fan of these Luz TP1X reels, or excuse me, rods. I mean, for a hundred bucks, you're getting a pretty good rod, especially because what makes these rides so good is they're local. So, you know, they're, they're easy to find at, at your Walmarts, your academies, your big sporting goods, things like that. They're pretty easy to find. And, you know, as great as these rods are, you know, you got to order them and things like that. So in a pinch, these rods are great. Again, I've caught plenty of fish on this one too. And it's really, again, it's been great. I think this is going to be my second season with this whole setup. I had a completely different setup for top water, not frogs before this, but it's been great. Not, I mean, not a whole lot to talk about with this one. No. But, okay, so we're going to get into the, the big boy, not literally speaking, but this is a pretty special one. So this is my last one. This is my wacky rig setup, specifically wacky rigs. You know, we are very heavy on wacky rigs on this channel, you know, especially when it comes to making fishing videos, you got to catch the fish. This is a, this is a wacky rig specific setup and it's by far our most expensive setup that we have by a landslide. Yeah, it's uh, actually disgusting how <laughs> expensive that is. All right, we'll, we'll explain in a, in a little bit. But so we'll start with the real. This is the Shimano Vanford 2500 HG. This is the step up from the Shimano Stratic. In my opinion, if you already have the Stratic, you don't really need to upgrade. It's a lot of very minor fine tuning upgrades on the Vanford as opposed to the Stratic. Um, a little bit lighter too, so a little bit better for finesse stuff. But Shimano Vanford 2500 HG, I, I really like 2500 size reels for bass. Yeah. I, in my opinion, 2000 is a little too small and 3000 is a little too big. Um, so 2500 is perfect. So now it's the rod. So this rod is a very special circumstance. I actually got a trade off of Facebook Marketplace for this. So I did not pay a retail for this. Um, I got a pretty, pretty good deal. But this is the Century Demon Jr. This rod retails for $550. You do not need to buy this to enjoy bass fishing. Just <laughs> yeah, preface that. Yeah. Big preface there. You do not need to buy this. But again, I got it at such a good deal on a trade for actually the Garmin Striker. I think I got a really good deal there. But this is a seven foot medium fast. So it's not a medium heavy, it's a medium fast. It's only rated to up to, I think, five eighths. So it's pretty, it's a, it's a light duty rod, super long handle, but this is a pure carbon fiber and glass rod. And it's actually been upgraded. So there's an upgraded reel seat on this and there's Torzite guides. So I'll show you, you can't really make a difference from the camera, but Torzite guides and a upgraded reel seat. So the Torzite guides are somewhere between 150 and 200 bucks. And the, I'm not sure what the real seat was. And the, that's disgusting. Yeah. The rod, the rod itself, not even the real is close to 800 bucks. Again, I did not pay a retail, got it used. And the Shimano Vanford's 250 bucks. So this is an over $1,000 setup. Put that away. <laughs> We're going to lock it up. But yeah, so this is, that's definitely a very used rod. You know, it's definitely by far the most used rod that we have on the channel. But yeah, guys, that is the full rod and reel arsenal showcase video. Again, keep in mind, you know, we did not buy this stuff all at once. This is probably six years, six solid years worth of collecting and chipping away at upgrades and things like that. Um, we did not go out and spend, you know, $6,000 on rods all in one day. No. Uh, many, many years of collecting, many, many years of upgrading. You know, again, we started at, I started at a Shakespeare ugly stick and a Shakespeare agility reel, $15 and $40, you know? So you work up as you, as you progress in your fishing career. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you have any questions, definitely leave a comment down below. I'll try to leave links to this stuff as best I can. There's just a yeah. lot here. So, there's, there's a lot. Uh, I will try. 
But yeah, we really hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you guys in the fishing season. See you later.